I need to tell you guys about a guy named Frank Campbell and how he's a dirty sandbagger. <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk about a climb called Kimasabi, uh, which is, uh, I'm just looking on the page actually right now. It says WI5 on the page, but in the guidebooks, in all traditional guidebooks, uh, this has been rated as like WI4+. plus. Let me tell you, every single time I've climbed this, it is nowhere near that. It's WI6. It's insane climbing. It's unprotectable. It's like steep, chandelier, difficult, crap ice. I don't know what Frank Campbell climbed this in. Uh, I think he's just a sandbagger and uh, he likes to sandbag. So he climbed it in 1987. But um, yeah, in today's episode, that's what we're going to talk about. What is up, guys? For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Philip Setter. I'm an avid ice climber, rock climber, and backcountry skier here in Canada. I'm also an insurance broker that specializes in insuring individuals in those sports. Uh, if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description. But let's just get right into the episode. Oh, okay. Kimasabi, Kimasabi, Kimasabi. So yeah, okay. So if you don't know Kimasabi, uh, it's a two- pitch two pitch yeah it's, it's a two pitch uh ice climb out in white Pris. it doesn't get as many ascents as as other climbs and i think it just has to do with like not a lot of people know how to get uh to white Pris. um at least i don't think so it is kind of convoluted to drive out to white Pris, and you do need somewhat of an off-road vehicle but not even that much like actually a standard suv would uh get you out there so I've climbed this route a couple of times. And um, yeah, like I mentioned, the, the first ascensionist, Frank, rated it WI4+. Plus. I think it's in Will's app as WI4 or WI4+. Plus. Uh, the first time that I went to go do it was with my buddy, Matt Prestupa. Uh, we went out and I'm just like, I think we were just like, yeah, let's just go for like a chill day. You know, like like nothing crazy. <laughs> like it'll just be, you know, I'm thinking it's like two pitches WI4+. I'm like, that should be no problem. You know, we'll get out there and we'll do that. Now, there's there's a pretty terrible story uh, about Kimasabi. And I've always just been a little bit like terrified of this climb. Um, there's another YouTube channel. And I can't remember what, what was it called again? Um, I can't remember. The guy's name was Tyler Davidson. Um, God, what was his channel called? I can't remember. But actually, I remember watching his channel years ago years and years ago before i ever created my own youtube channel and and he was he's a fun he was a phenomenal phenomenal ice climber incredibly strong um you know and he was climbing like the craziest routes i loved watching his videos um because they, they were just like the craziest routes that he was climbing you know like rainbow serpent like all these wi6 is super super strong climber ah, i want to know what his channel was called i can't remember he deleted the channel uh, or made everything private <clears throat> but anyways um, yeah, so there was a terrible story that happened to him. He was climbing it with, um, with two other guys. I can't remember who the third guy was, but the other guy was, was one of my good buddies named Jean, Jean Pelicon. Jean Pelicon. I always get his, his last name. I think it's Pelicon. Pelicon is French. Uh, is he French? Pelicon? I can't remember. I don't think he's French. I just think his last name is, he's from Nova Scotia. Anyways, this isn't relevant to the story. Um, so they went out to climb it. They were on the second pitch. Uh, Tyler was was leading the pitch. You know, he had a bunch of screws in. And I think he was maybe about halfway up. His tool ripped out of the ice. Um, and he ended up ripping all, every single screw he had ripped. Uh, he hit the deck. He hit his head. And um, yeah, it was super bad. Good thing. Like Jean is, is um, an eMERGE doctor. Um, so, you know, I'm super glad that he was there. They ended up calling a helicopter. They picked him up and, um, took him to the hospital. And I think they had to like, like saw off a piece of his skull to, um, yeah, to basically like relieve some of the pressure that was on his, his brain. It was basically swelling and it was, um, pushing against his skull. So... Yeah, anyways, long story short, um, ter terrible, terrible accident that ended up happening. Uh, he did manage, he, he did survive. They put him in surgery. Um, he did manage to to survive, which is really good. Um, but I think, you know, the, there was some lasting impacts. You know, he's, he's definitely had some damage that's happened since that accident or from that accident, I should say. So, you know, 
from the very beginning, this climb has like, has terrified me because, you know, I've heard of that accident and I know that accident and, you know, I, I've never climbed with Tyler, but I've heard a lot about him from other people that I climb with. And, you know, the, the census is, is that like, he's an incredibly strong climber. And, um, you know, if that could happen to him, then like crap, it could happen to anyone because he's incredibly strong. So we went to go to Kimasabi and, you know, I really thought that, um, you know, that it would be in like WI4 condition. And so, you know, I'm there with Matt, we climb the, the first pitch, um, which is relatively easy. You know, you just kind of go like, it's, I don't know, it is actually just WI4. Like it's not very difficult. You get to the top and I'm looking at this second pitch and I'm just like, oh my God, like it's dead vertical, chandeliered, doesn't look like it's that protectable, doesn't look great. Um, yeah, definitely like, like full on, full, full on. So I'm like, okie dokie, like, okay, sounds, sounds good. So I'm just looking at it and like, you know, when you go out for like an easy day, you're not that mentally prepared for like, you know, that difficult of a climb. Like you got to kind of psych yourself up for a difficult climb. And I was not psyched up for that. So I'm just looking at him kind of like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So Matt came up, um, you know, brought it, brought him up to me. And we're staring at this thing now. And he's like, he's looking too. And he's like, oh, uh, I don't know. And I'm like, dude, I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know um, in the slightest, right? So anyways, we, um, yeah, so we, we were looking at it. And I'm just, I'm like, you know what? I think I see it. I think I see a line, you know, on, on the right side. You know, it looks not that bad, you know, and there's also some good stemming, right? So it looks like you could, you know, get up this side. And so he's like, okay, let's do it. So I get over there, you know, I start up the route and, you know, I throw a few screws in before you know it, I'm like halfway up and I'm like, this is full on committing. Like this is like, like full on now I'm in it. The, the screw quality is not great. Um, you know, but I'm, but I'm now I'm committed. I'm on this thing. I don't know what I would rate it. Um, you know, either I juggling between five plus or, or six, I have some GoPro footage that I'm probably going to overlay this video with. Um, you know, it's hard to tell in the video, you know, cause GoPros don't always do the, the climb justice, but it was like pretty dead vertical WI five plus maybe WI six minus somewhere in that range. Um, but, but like, yeah, I mean, besides the screw quality, phenomenal climbing, just again, like that, you know, it, it, it just, uh, to be honest, it just like terrified me from, from what happened to, to Tyler Davidson. And, you know, there's kind of that, like, you know, energy, I can feel it, right. It's kind of like a, a, it's a scary place, right. I'll be honest, totally scary. So, uh, ended up finishing it. Um, great, like, yeah, great climb, you know, besides the unprotectability, but I mean, that's to be had about any WI6, uh, route brought Matt up. Poor Matt. <laughs> Matt doesn't climb that often. And so that's like, that's one of the best feelings like any, any climber can have is when they bring their second up and you hear them just struggle. <laughs> like that's the best feeling you can have. But like the worst thing you can have is like when you lead a route and you're struggling on it and you're like, this is full on and you get to the top and then your second is just like, la di da di da di da di da And he comes up and he's like, oh yeah, awesome route. Good time. You're just like, ah, oh, my God. Right. But then, you know, when they, when they're just suffering, right. Then you're like, yeah, I feel good. <laughs> so, so yeah, he, um, he was suffering, uh, for sure. I could just, I could hear him just like swearing and just like, you know, I think a few times he asked for a take, you know, sorry, Matt, if you're listening to this, I'm, I'm outing you. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was pretty, pretty full on, uh, got to the top, you know, we wrapped down and walked out beautiful climb. Um, yeah, that was the first time I climbed it. Second time I climbed it was with Staz and, um, this was the next year. And again, it was in like this totally crazy condition. Like I would rate it again, like WI five plus or WI six again, right? It, it's full on condition. Um, and, and that video, um, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's like something about barfies, but in that one, I got the worst barfies of my life. I started whimpering. I started crying. I actually had to hang off my tool, 
um, and just sit there and like let the barfies come through me because <laughs> they were the worst I've ever had. I was literally whimpering on this climb. I'm just hanging by my tool and I'm just, uh, <laughs> Oh yeah. But anyways, yeah, Kimasabi is is a pretty great climb. Um but be mentally and physically prepared for a full on like WI5+ plus or WI6. If you haven't done Kimasabi, go and do it. It's awesome. Um but it is pretty full on. Um there is it is kind of weird uh to get the parking is kind of weird. It is in Wipress like I mentioned. Uh, if if you guys want the the, um, the GPS, I have GPS tracks to get there. Um, just let me know and and uh, like drop a comment or reach out on on Instagram or something like that, and I can send you all the GPS tracks I have for this. Um, because I think that you know if you're if you're you know shooting around that that like ice climbing uh, range like WI five plus WI six, this is a definitely must do. Super super cool environment, awesome climb, and you won't see another soul at all. Nobody's out here. You're totally alone up in this area. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's episode and I'll see you guys in the next one.